From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Cal Mervin, State Police. Well, Lieutenant, they found you in a hurry. Sure, I was home in bed where any decent person would be this hour of the night or morning or whatever it is. You'll get no sympathy from me. I haven't even been to bed. What are you doing, Dollar? Living in a tree up there and using that Forest Service phone for your own private exchange? More or less. I've got another body for you, Lieutenant. That's a happy good morning. Who's this one? An ex-Chicago hood named Spade Keller. What did you do, kill him? No, he fell over a cliff, in a manner of speaking. That's three of the gang dead now. The only one left is Jipper Nitsen himself. Have you found him yet? No, but I think I will in the next hour or so. Dollar, I can't hold my men out of there any longer. I gotta move in. Give me till noon, Lieutenant. If I can take him myself, it may save an innocent person's life. He's a three-time killer already. I know, and you've been selling me that story for the last 12 hours. That's what's held me back. But I've got to have more details. All right. A friend who's with me, a prospector named Jed Marsh, will meet you here at the Forest Service phone in an hour. He'll be in a green station wagon. When did you get a hold of a green station wagon? We haven't yet. We're about to steal it. So long, Lieutenant. Tonight... And every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Primrose Camp, Santa Rita National Forest, Arizona... To the home office, Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Primrose Matter. Expense account, final page. The Jibber Nitsen gang had held up an armored truck in Kansas City, killed two guards, and fled with a $100,000 payroll covered by insurance. I'd finally tracked them down in the Santa Rita Mountains of southern Arizona. Three of the gang were dead now, and only the jipper himself was still unaccounted for. But he was close around, that I was sure of, somewhere near the Primrose Tourist Camp where I was staying. A lonely layout on a dead-end mountain road run by old Pop Bardell and his wife, and their daughter Jenny, whom I still hadn't seen. It was nearly dawn when Jed Marsh and I got back to the camp. There was no sign of life. We'd taken the keys to Pop's station wagon from the dead gangster's pocket. Jed got into the station wagon and waited until I was over at the cabin, then started the motor. I was counting on the sound of the motor to bring somebody out into the open. And the plan worked. Partly. But it wasn't the jibber who showed. It was Pompardell. Pete! What are you doing? Where are you going? He came running out of the living quarters behind the souvenir shop, tugging at his suspenders. Come back here! He didn't notice me until I walked up behind him. What the devil? What are you doing up? I'm an early riser. Anything wrong, Mr. Bardell? Wrong? Why, no. What do you think be wrong? I don't know. But I thought you seemed a little upset about something. Well, I was just... Did you happen to notice who was driving my station wagon, Mr. Dollar? I can't say I particularly noticed. I imagine it was your nephew, wasn't it? I don't know. I didn't get out in time to see. Well, who else would it be? Your daughter, you told me, is in Tucson. There's nobody else here, is there? Except you and your wife? No, no, nobody else, huh? I just thought maybe I... I reckon it was him, all right. He don't seem to be around. Is he in the habit of taking your car without telling you, Mr. Bardell? No, of course not. He must have just gone after something. He'll be back in a little while. You know, it seems funny him having the keys to it. He's kind of taken over your place here, hasn't he? What do you mean? Well, taking your car the way he just did. And yesterday evening, when I wanted to rent a cabin for the night, you claimed they were all full, weren't going to let me have one until he stepped in and okayed it. Well, he's, he's my nephew, one of the family. Somehow, though, I can't quite picture you as a man who'd let any other member of his family run things. Unless, of course, you happen to be in a position where you had no choice. What are you talking about? I think you know. Well, of course I got a choice. Why wouldn't I have? Not one, though, that you'd probably care to make if I've got the setup here tagged right. You ain't no tourist, Dollar, and you ain't here looking for uranium. Who are you, anyhow? I'm a special investigator for an insurance company, the company that insured that $100,000 payroll that was stolen in Kansas City by Jipper Nitsen and his gang. What's that got to do with anything here at Primrose? Quite a bit, Mr. Bardell, because this is where the gang hold up. 
The two of them who were left after they shot their way through that roadblock down on the Nogales Highway. You, you're crazy. I'd know it if, if there was any strangers around here. You did know it. One of the two was the man you claim was your nephew. Now, no, wait a minute. Actually, he was a gangster by the name of Spade Keller. He's dead, by the way. Huh? He's dead? Yeah, that's right. It wasn't he that took your station wagon. It was a friend of yours, Jed Marsh. Jed? Why? What's he aiming to do? Meet the police on the road down below, tell them what the setup is here, and stall them off if he can. Long enough for me to have a try at taking Nitsen without giving him a chance to hurt your daughter. What do you mean by that? Last night, your wife told me Jenny was in a room ill. You said she was in Tucson. One thing's sure, she wasn't around here anywhere. Neither was Jipper. I think he's been holding her as a hostage to keep you and your wife in line. That's why you had to let Spade Keller pass himself off as your nephew? No, 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 that ain't true. You're out of your mind. Am I? Jenny's in, in Tucson, like I told you. Your wife said she was here. Oh, she was upset. Sure she all. was. Sure she was, because of the danger to her daughter, the same reason that's got you upset. No, it ain't true. She'll have a lot better chance if you cooperate with me. Please get out of here, Dollar. Leave us alone. It wouldn't change things if I did. The police are going to move in at noon with 50 men and start a search... Chip is a three-time killer already. One more won't matter to him. I can't help you. Please don't ask me to. He'll use her as a hostage, a shield, and try to shoot his way out. She won't have a chance. Ooh. Your best hope is to tell me where he is. Help me get to him without arousing a suspicion. I can't do it. I can't take the chance. Yes, you can. Myra. Morning, Mrs. Mardell. He's a special investigator, Myra. He knows the whole thing. He, he says... Yes, he... I've been listening. I heard what he said. And he's right, too. Myra, that fellow Nitson said if we were I so much I know what as... he said. If we breathed one word of him being here to anybody, he'd kill Jenny first and then us. And I heard what Mr. Dollar just said, too. And he's right. we got to take the chance for Jenny's sake. It's all we can do now. I don't know. I, I just don't know. With the police coming in like they are, it's out of our hands now. She's right, Mr. Bardell. You can't do anything about the inevitable. It's a matter now of doing what's best and safest for your daughter. What else do you suppose I've been thinking of for two days? It's still the only thing to think of. If I didn't agree with you, I wouldn't be here. I'd turn my information over to the police and let them go ahead and search the area. They'd get Nitsen all right, but not before he killed her. Oh, no. But I think I can prevent that. The chipper doesn't know me. As far as he's concerned, I'm just another eastern tourist wandering around the mountains here. And because of that, I think I can get a lot closer to him than the police can without putting him on guard. Provided you'll help. He's right. We gotta do what he says. He's holed up in an old tunnel about a quarter mile back up the canyon there. They took some silver out in the old days. Not many folks even know about it. And your daughter's there with him? Yes, sir. Mo and me's been taking food to him twice a day, making sure she's all right. And she has been. I guess he knowed that's the only hold he had over us. You haven't been there yet this morning, have you? No, he don't expect us for around ten. Well, maybe by that time, if things go all right, he'll have more to worry about than whether he gets his breakfast or not. What are you aiming to do, Mr. Dollar? Make an early morning prospecting trip up that canyon. I'll take a pick, a Geiger counter, anything to help look the part. Now, here, I'll leave my gun with you, Mr. Bardell, and my wallet. You're going up there without no gun? Sunday prospectors from the east don't carry them. Wish me luck. I left a little while later with a complete kit and dressed to fit the part, even including a couple of sandwiches and a canteen of water to show I was planning to spend a full day in the hills. At the end of an hour, I was working my way down the canyon, shipping rock samples here and there, testing with a Geiger counter, apparently without a care in the world. The brush-covered entrance to the tunnel was only a few yards ahead of me, but I made a point of deliberately ignoring it. Finally, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away. I pushed aside the brush as though to get at the canyon wall, then pretended to see the tunnel for the first time. I pushed aside some more brush, and I stepped inside. After a moment's hesitation, I fished out my flashlight and started walking back in from the entrance. I hadn't gone far before I got results. Oh. I went out like a light. You didn't have to hit him. He's just some prospector who stumbled in here accidentally. Relax, kid. He's just knocked out. You didn't have to hit him like that. I can't afford to take chances. I'm going out the entrance to make sure he was alone. If he comes to you, call me. The blow had been sharp, but without much force. I was out only for a matter of seconds, but I went on playing possum. I waited now until he was out of earshot. Jenny. You're conscious. You 
know my name. Take it easy. I don't want him to hear us. But who are you? What are you... Never mind. There's no time. Just don't worry. I'm here to get you out of this. But how? He's a killer. A gangster. I know who he is. Look, has he got that money here with him? That he stole in Kansas City? Yeah. Yeah, I sent some canvas sacks back inside the tunnel, Father. What difference does that make? Plenty. That's what I was hired to recover. Hired to... I don't understand Oh, well, you. I'll tell you later. Now, if you'll keep your head and give me a little help, we've got a good chance Wait. of getting you... Wait. He's coming back. All right, listen. Maneuver him four or five yards away from me with his back turned and keep him that way for just five seconds. I'll do the rest. Got it? Yeah, but I don't know if Never I can. Never mind the if. Just do it. All right. Don't let him know I'm conscious. That guy still on? Yeah, I, I think maybe he's dying. Then let him. Come on, get away from him, leave him alone. It's inhuman to treat anybody that way. Oh, shut up, I got problems of my own. How much longer are you gonna keep me here? I get a hunch that something is wrong. Things just don't feel right this morning. If I thought this guy had something to do with Chipper, it, I'd... I asked you how much longer... And I said shut up! How'd you like to make me shut up? Huh? How do you mean that? Suppose you come here and find out. Well, now. Took you two days, but you're finally starting to soften up. My huh? hand closed over a rock it's almost as like big as a baseball, way. weighing over half a pound. And I came slowly to my feet. Chipper whirled around, going for his gun. Hey, what's the devil? What? I aimed for his head. All right, Jenny. He can pick up his gun. But look how he's bleeding. You've killed him. No. No, I haven't killed him. But I imagine the state will. <laughs> Expense account item 12, $309.45. Incidentals in Arizona and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $914.15. Remarks? The state eventually did. Kill him, I mean. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Ever chase a phantom? Well, believe me, I have. And I will next week in the Phantom Chase Matter. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Marvin Miller, Junius Matthews, Herb Ellis, D.J. Thompson, Herb Butterfield, Tony Barrett, and Barbara Eiler. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 